It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday presented by DraftKings. And the wisdom today comes via 17-year NFL veteran quarterback, Kerry Collins. I've been hoping pretty much ever since I started this show to get Kerry Collins on at some point. I noticed that he had commented on a couple of my Twitter posts that related to food. And so I reached out to him via DM and asked if he'd come on the show. He said yes. In fact, we just talked yesterday and the conversation was so fun and was going so well. It's going to be a two-parter. Part one will be today with Kerry. And then we'll have Greg Cosell tomorrow, as always, on the Teaching Tutorial Thursday edition of the Raw Sucker Football Podcast. And then Monday, we'll do part two of Kerry Collins because the conversation, at least for me, was that fun, that engaging, that interesting. Hopefully, you guys agree. You feel the same way. But usually, if I'm feeling it, you're feeling it. And I guess we'll find out because it's Big Show time. The Big Show. So I know I say this all the time, but I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. I can't wait for you guys to hear this story, actually, as I'm joined by the great Kerry Collins, 17 years in the NFL for six different teams. Kerry, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Man, great to talk with you, Russ. Great to talk with you, man. So I think that uh, I think I've told you this story before. You have. When, uh, before a game, either when I was a player or when I was already broadcasting, because, I mean, I played seven years, but you started, like, six years before me <laughs> and ended, like, <laughs> six years after. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait for the listeners to hear this, but I think I want to say that I might have been the first person to ever ask for your autograph. Um, I, I distinctly remember – so I grew up in Why Missing – Kerry went to high school at Wilson, their neighboring towns in Reading, Pennsylvania. And I was a huge Penn State fan. And I'll never forget being at Anthony's Five Barbers in West Reading um, on Penn Avenue. And Kerry came in. By the way, you weren't getting a whole lot of haircut. You had like a mullet going. Like you weren't getting a big cut there. <laughs> I did, man. I, 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 hang on, I, I hung on to the mullet for quite a while, no doubt. You know, I'd like to have a little bit of flow coming out the back, you know. And, uh, you know, what, what probably wasn't my best look, but at the time I thought it was pretty cool. No, that's what, that was the style back then. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think you were like 17 and had just committed to Penn state that's right. and I must've been 11 or 12 and really into Penn state, really into autographs. So I ended up getting your autograph at Anthony's five barbers. And then, man, I was a diehard. I don't know if you remember Carrie, but if, if you ever remember, a, a chubby kid, <laughs> that wore a Kerry Collins jersey and came to like every game. Yep. That was me. Uh, you signed it. I had this, we had this girl, she ended up going to Harvard. Great artist. I had her make this whole like um thing of you. Like, dude, I was like a diehard. <laughs> I remember some of the other guys on the team asking me, they thought I was your brother. Like, I went to <laughs> I went to eight or nine games one year. I went to so many games and wore that jersey. I was like, no, I'm just a fan, like from the hometown. Do you remember that at all? I do. I remember. I remember the barbershop thing when you came in and asked for my autograph because I that was one of the first ones I ever gave. There's no doubt about it. And uh, uh, along with you, I always had great support back there in, in uh, you know in West Lawn, West Reading, and uh, but I I I remember that that incident like uh, like pretty well. So absolutely, that's so funny because also. Um, You'll appreciate this, but when you had that awesome year in 94, Penn State undefeated, national champs in my mind, at least co-champs or whatever, that was my sophomore year at Why Missing. Right. And it was kind of a shame, carry because once you're like – like I was a huge fan from like seven years old to 14. And then right. as soon as like – you're starting for the high school team. Like I was in 10th grade, your fandom drops off like <laughs> significantly, you know, right, like, right. 
I wasn't watching every Penn State game. Like it wasn't. Wow. And so you you guys were finally awesome. You were amazing. And I like I th- I thought I was cool then. You know. Of course. Yeah. Of course. You're doing your thing, man. You moved on. You know. You're trying to establish your own. Uh, uh, you know, your, your own legacy, your own stardom. So I totally get it, man. Totally get it. It's really funny, too. Um, for people that don't know, knowing Carrie, being from where we're from, and I've kind of, I don't know if I'd say reconnected with you, but I've seen Carrie a couple times comment on social media when I post food from where we're from. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> whether it's That's right. whether it's Levin and Bologna or Stromboli or whatever, <laughs> which, yeah. which is what compelled me to reach back out um yeah. and talk with you so by the way yeah. carrie my dad's five nine a buck 70 right. it's bananas that i ended up playing seven years offensive line nfl like it's just like never expected that at all and to i know a couple of times we were on the same field at the same time is um really really cool so carrie um went to lebanon in 10th grade came to wilson got drafted in baseball by the detroit tigers and i still remember carrie Going to the uh, the county championship basketball game, yep. you against Danielle Marshall, yeah. who I think played yeah. like 18 years in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. And man, Kerry, you were bodying him up as much as you could, but he, he just he had some stuff that you did not. Uh, let me tell you what he uh, we were still kind of in football mode that whole basketball season, you know, because we we went far, we made it to the state championship in football, right? So, you know, we, we were just – we were still in football mode. But I'll, I distinctly remember that county championship game. We, we, were, we were bullheaded, and we just kept going in, going in after him, going in. And literally, I think he blocked the first six shots that we took. Like, we just kept going in, or he just kept swatting away. We were too, too dumb, you know, to, 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 to stop trying it, you know. So, uh, but, man, what a player. Uh, gosh, man, he was long, could shoot. Um, you know, not surprising to see the career they had. It's pretty cool for uh, Reading, Pennsylvania, to have two guys going against each other that both play 15 plus years, yeah. you know, or top five picks or whatever. But with you being so good at baseball and football, that had to be one of your most humbling things to to play against a guy like that in hoops. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, he 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 stood out, and you know, growing up, basketball is my favorite, right? I, I love basketball. I, I want to be a basketball player, but you know, reality kind of set in, and I kind of knew that I was gonna, you know, have a better future in either baseball or football. But you had to face a guy like that, and um, I remember when I was a freshman at Lebanon, I also I also played against Billy Owens. I don't know if you if you remember him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Syracuse, you know, played in the NBA for a long time, man. So. I mean, I got to play against some great basketball players, but Danielle, man, and we we had some we had some battles, and they were tight games. You know, I remember in the regular season, but uh, that that county championship game, man, he just took over and uh, and 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 really put it to us. All right, so you mentioned Lebanon. I never asked you about this. Always been curious. Obviously, you had a lot of early success in sports, all three sports. At some point in tenth grade or after tenth grade, you transferred to Wilson. What looking back on it now, Kerry? What were the pros and cons of that? Because, you know, I look at, I have two daughters now, right? And I see what happens in high school sports around here. And I look at, and I can see, I totally get being able to be at a bigger school, a powerhouse school in all three of those sports, the exposure. And obviously it worked out beautifully for you, but also had to be tough to say bye to your boys in Lebanon, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know that's a tough that's a tough age to move, right? It's sophomore year. I mean, you know, you, you like you said, you grew up with with all my all my buddies, and uh, you know, to leave right, you know, right right in that at that time, and that that, that gets tough. So um, I'll say this though: I mean, the people at Wilson were just phenomenal. I mean, they 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 welcomed me, and and I had I had, I had great support there, and, and made made great friends, and uh, you know, what a community to be a part of. But um, you know, I'll say I'll put it to you this way: you know, when my when my daughter got to be in high school you know we we made the decision and partly because of this is that hey wherever she starts ninth grade like that's where she's staying right i mean there's something to be said for that consistency and um you know that that just staying staying in one place and uh you know i mean it, it's it was easy to make friends because the people of wilson were so great but 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 it's a hard move right and and, and um, you know, I, I, I worry sometimes that, that, that families move, you know, right before their senior year, you know, for, for athletic reasons. And, and I get it, you know, I mean, everybody's trying to, 
you know, get that scholarship or whatever, get the most exposure they can. But, um, you know, it, it's, you know, having gone through a little bit of that, you know, there, it's definitely, there's definitely a downside to it, which is, you know, you, you, you kind of lose that, 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 um, uh, you know, that, 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 that feeling you had of, of growing up with people and, and all the things you share with them and, and finishing out of high school. Yeah, that's, that's tough. So I'm curious, um, you know, obviously you probably don't think about that much, but 17 years, six teams, obviously Penn State, you're a high pick. When you look back on your career, what do you think? Like, are you thrilled? Do you think about, oh, if we had just won this or if I could have done that? Or do you think, man, that I uh, that that was pretty special? Because to me, Kerry, first of all, anybody that plays over 10 years is just ridiculous. But what makes you so special to me is you had some crazy adversity early in your career. Yeah. And then you overcame that. And had a, an awesome long career after that. Like, I tell people all the time, like, it's hard enough just to be in the league and just to stay, period, let alone to find a way to overcome the adversity that you did. Well, thanks, and I appreciate that. And a lot of that adversity was self-inflicted, right? I mean, I, 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 I made it hard on myself for, for in, a, in a lot of those instances. But, um, you know, when I look back, I think, well, you know, gosh, it would have been – we made it to the Super Bowl once and we got killed by the Ravens. They were a great team. Hats off to them. Their defense was awesome, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, so not having won a Super Bowl certainly is something that that I, uh, that, that I, I look back and wish, obviously, uh, would have happened. I wish I would have had another crack at it at a Super Bowl. And, uh, uh, you know, that would have been nice. But um, on the flip side of that is kind of what you were saying. I mean, just my longevity, you know, and my – and uh, how I was able to, to continue playing and, and different phases of my career, right? I started out, you know, I'm a high pick and I'm a starter and, you know, things are going kind of crazy. And then all of a sudden I'd settle down and get to New York and, you know, I'm on, I'm on a great Giants team, right? They already had a great defense. Now all of a sudden, you know, I'm in, and there was like Tiki Barber and, and uh, Amani Toomer, Jeremy Shockey, you know, and, and uh, you know, things are now taking off and uh, go out to Oakland, a couple rough years there. I get to Tennessee, and it's, and it's a little bit different, right? They just drafted Vince Young. Uh, they want to bring me in as kind of that steady backup guy, kind of the solid guy, which is pretty funny considering, you know, what what, uh, uh, what my first few few years will look, look like. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, I remain valuable just because of my experience and the amount that I played. And uh, listen, I think, you know, uh, I think I'm, I'm one of just a, a few guys that, that took three teams to a playoff you know, to the playoffs. So yeah, was I a, was I an elite quarterback? No, I know that, but I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I was closer to, to the top than I was the bottom as far as, uh, you know, you look at the number of quarterbacks that have ever played in the NFL. Right. So, uh, Hey, listen, I'm proud of my career and I had a lot of help along the way. Uh, I had to figure things, some things out, but, um, you know, once I did and, and just kind of let it come to me, you know, and, and, uh, just, uh, just, rely on on my abilities and my wisdom and and the people around me that's when that's when that's when a lot of good things started happening so i want to get to the food in a second and by the way the food i'm going to talk about with carrie goes great with some labat blue light so get some labat blue lights with your friends and live life to the power of wheat and some stromboli and some lebanon bologna always enjoy responsibly beer labat usa buffalo new york carrie i haven't checked but last time i looked you were like top 20 in a bunch of stats for yards and stuff like that, which is just crazy. And this is really funny to me. My producer, Jack, is a 22-year-old um, young guy outside of Philly. And um, when I talked about you, he, he he knows you as the Titans quarterback. Like, he right, remembers right, you right. as the Titans. Like, and so for like me, it's like, no, Giants, man. But yeah. – um, 2008 was actually the first year I was out. I retired in 08 okay, right. and I was buddies and business partners actually with Jake Scott. Okay. So I was yeah. following around, I was following you guys closely. I was really rooting for you guys. Um, but that was an amazing year you had down there in Tennessee, uh, with the Titans. And, and you're right. I, I think you're definitely closer to the top than the bottom. You had an unbelievable career. Not everybody can be Brady or Peyton Manning. You know what right, I mean? Right, like, right, right, right. Um, sure. I, you know, you mentioned the adversity and you said self-inflicted. I guess I've always kind of wondered, and maybe there's not a right answer or wrong answer to this. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think, Carrie, that 
the issues that came with transferring and leaving all your friends, do you think that had anything to do with, uh, you know, the alcohol issues that you had in the NFL or totally unrelated? Or is there like no way to know? No, I think there's something to that. I mean, without getting into the weeds too far, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there were some things there. I mean, my parents split up. Um, there was, you know, there's a lot of controversy around around that time when I moved. And, and uh, um, there's some of that stuff that, that had an effect. And, and uh, But the bottom line is, Ross, like, I needed to grow up. I mean, that's, that's basically what it was, right? I mean, I, I needed to grow up. I needed to um you know become more professional um i needed to appreciate more the, the position i was in and um you know w- once i did that and again when i got the giants i had a lot of help right i mean i you know alcohol was a problem um and and i needed i needed to figure that out right and uh when i got there i got I had a ton of help i mean they were awesome and uh um so yes w- was there some residual stuff from there yes without getting too deep into it but uh bottom line is you know i had to grow up I, you know, I had, to, I had to learn how to become a professional, um, you know, and but one of the things that helped me was, I mean, I was living and dying with every win, man. You know what I mean? Like I, I was I was I was riding the highs and, and I was right down there with the lows, too. So I had to learn to uh, just keep keep more of an even keel with things. And and and, and that really helped me a lot. Uh, and and, you know, it, it's such it's such difficult business. Right. And especially as a quarterback and as a as a uh, as a high pick. And, and that, that was some of the other stuff, you know, I, I didn't take the, the loss of anonymity very well. I didn't handle that very well. And I think that was a lot of, of what caused a lot of my alcohol issues, you know? Um, and I, I had to learn how to deal with that, you know, and it was kind of the thing, well, like, Hey, if you want to play in the NFL, like this is part of it. And once I accepted that and, you know, uh, figured out I needed to grow up and uh, you know, I, and again, all the help I got when I got to New York, you know, that's when things, you know, started to kind of fall into place. You know, I tell people all the time, Carrie, um, that's why it's nice to be an O lineman because <laughs> right. it's like, you still get the reservations. You still get all the hookups. People know you're a player cause you're like 315 pounds, but they don't care enough to like bother you that much. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> like, right. I tell people, they think I'm joking when I say like, it's like, I wouldn't want to be Brady. Like he can't, he can't do anything normal. Like nothing. I mean, and I know he's learned how to navigate it or whatever, but it right. that would be tough for sure. No, um, it, you mentioned it, all it's, the help. It's, life, it's life changing. I mean, it really is life changing. And I wasn't ready for it. I mean, I I wasn't ready for it. Did not handle it well. Um, but um, you know, in being in Carolina, being the first pick, there's a lot of there's a lot of you know eyes on you know a, bit, a lot of excitement about the team. We had some success early, so there's a lot of things that, that just kind of all came together. And, and again, I mean, I, I did not handle any of it very well, but eventually I learned and, and uh, got better. Awesome stuff from Kerry Collins. Excited for you guys to hear part two. Listen, I know some of that, you know, goes back to where we're both from, and I get that, but it's still kind of cool to hear that I was the first person that got his autograph, all that stuff, I think. It's pretty interesting that you guys would enjoy. I enjoy Max. So if you're like me, what you watch depends on what kind of mood you're in. Max right now, my first pick for winning entertainment. There's nothing else on. I mean, there's no football, no basketball, there's no hockey. Sometimes I'm craving comedies like Friends or South Park. Sometimes it's dramas. Succession, Jack, I know, loves that. I haven't gotten into that yet. House of the Dragon. They got cooking shows. If you're into that, like Chopped. Beat Bobby Flay, and then all kinds of movies. Lord of the Rings, Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Max is the streaming destination, has the best of entertainment for whatever mood I'm in, whatever mood you're in, anytime. And plans start as little as $9.99 a month. Max, the one to watch. Subscription required. Visit max.com. Tuck Stakes. All right, Ross. We'll start with the Rams. Bring back running back Sony Michelle. Should be noted, by the way, Jack, before I forget, number one, that is a serious haircut, man. <laughs> you, you look like you are like what what tell me about that haircut real quick. 
Yeah, I've just, I mean, to be honest, I was just sick of the long hair. I've had it for so long, probably like three years at this point. I haven't had an actual haircut this short. So I just decided, you know what, it's time. It's summer. I need less hair in my face. I just chopped it off basically completely. I look like a 1950s businessman. You look awesome. Thank you. I think you look better. Thank you. I thought it was because you just graduated from college. So you're like, all right, time to get serious now, even though your job's the same. <laughs> um, I think you look fantastic. By the way, before I forget, um, I'm opening it up the best ball draft. We're going to have a best ball fantasy draft next week, which I absolutely love. It's so fun with Joe Dolan. It'll be a live draft. We're going to have it on YouTube. You guys should try to get into it. All you have to do is take advantage of any of our sponsors, especially westshorehome.com slash Ross, but any of our sponsors, and then forward me the email, ross at ross tucker.com. I think I have five or six entries in, so it means there's four open. I'm just taking the next four or five people that send it in. However many I need, the next four or five, you're automatically in. Take advantage of any sponsor. Send it to me, ross at ross tucker.com. could be the game time app, whatever. Sony Michelle, he was he like carried the load for the Rams when they won the Super Bowl a couple years ago. And then last year, I think he was with the Chargers. Now he's back. That when's the last time a guy did that? LA three years in a row with two different teams. Hard to do. <laughs> the Steelers were also busy yesterday. They cut wide receiver Anthony Miller, and then they also signed linebacker Nick Kwiatkowski. Well, so first of all, Anthony Miller, I think he had a really good rookie year for the Bears. And then there was an injury, and he just never never got back to where he was, unfortunately. And then for Kwiatkowski, you know, he's a Pittsburgh kid. I love stories like this. He's a Pittsburgh kid, went to West Virginia as a safety, ended up moving a linebacker. You know, he had a good contract from the Raiders. I thought he played really well when he was with the Bears. And so now they bring him back home. At, at worst, he's a uh, – a valuable, versatile depth linebacker. In legal news, Pat's cornerback Jack Jones pleads not guilty to his gun charges and former Bills punter Matt Ariza plans to sue alleged gang rape victims lawyer for defamation. I also saw late last night, Jack, there's some report about Tyreek Hill. Now, he supposedly he's under investigation for allegedly striking a Marine employee, something that had to do with a charter company um, at Hallover Marina. Anyway, Andy Slater of Fox Sports says that the alleged victim does not want to press charges at this time. I would not be surprised if that changes. So something to keep an eye on off the field with Tyree Kill. As it relates to Jack Jones... I, I never like talking about the legal stuff. I always feel like I'm out of my element. I saw where his lawyer said that basically it wasn't his. Um, I, I don't understand. Like you're going through TSA. Before they open a bag, they ask, is this your bag? So I, I'll be really curious to see how that plays out with Jack Jones, who's going with the bag wasn't mine. And then um, – I felt like I, I would have gone with, I forgot they were in there. I, I don't know. And then uh, the Bills punter, well, he should do that. I mean, I said this before. Whatever happened here, it's an absolute travesty at this point, right? Either this horrible, horrible act took place and Ariza was involved, or it didn't take place, or Ariza was involved, but... Any way you slice it, um, multiple lives have been forever changed. And that is tough. Really, really tough for everybody involved. Um, another situation that we'll have to monitor and see how things ultimately play out. As a reminder, we got the Fantasy Feast podcast with Joe Dolan. They were talking about all of the fantasy relevant football news that happened in mini camps and OTAs. So before you start drafting, listen to hear what happened before training camp start. And then, of course, Greg Cosell tomorrow as we continue our draft series, which has just been our, our season preview, which has just been absolutely epic. Already looking forward to that. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. I think we're done here. 
Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. Big fan of the I Think We're Done Here sponsors for the Ross Tucker Podcast Network. They're the people that pay 100 bucks a month to get a shout out at the end of every show. Like myfrontpagestory.com, best anniversary gift, best birthday gift. Then you got backofficescheduler.com, evergreen economics, go bangles.com, steakhouse sports.com, humanheadnyc.com, sportaculture, and pizza boy brewing. Yum. I think we're done here.